Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how these two molds will eliminate all these, thus saving you money and storage space. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks again for sticking around, checking out this episode. If you don't know me by now, I am Javi Guzman with MrPhoneDoctor.com. If this is your first time here and you guys enjoy all things tech and repair related, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and smack that bell so you're notified on our latest videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, or need a repair, please reach us at www.MrPhoneDoctor.com or simply reach us at any of our social media platforms found below. All right, let's go ahead and begin this episode. So as I mentioned earlier, we are now using these universal molds. Now in the past, we actually were purchasing individual molds for each series of device that was out there. Now this was, you know, costly, um, it wasted storage space, and it was just becoming too much. You know, after a new phone came out, we were actually required to purchase these sets of molds. So with these sets of molds, they basically make them for all models, you know, you make them, they have them for Note 8s, Note 10s, S8s, SA Pluses. So as generations would come out, we of course would have to purchase these molds. Now, to be honest with you guys, these molds were not cheap. We were spending about $100 per device on these molds. So you can see how that generally adds up. So we actually have about 15 molds stacked right here, which we are slowly slimming down and not really using at all. Thankfully, with these new universal molds, we're able to do all the laminating and everything with these two here. So as you can see, there's two different sets of molds. This is the OLED Magic Mold, okay? So with this Magic Mold, this one just allows you to lay your OLED flat and you can just squash your glass with the laminator on top of it. And then this is our actual universal OCA mold. So this one's actually really, really simple. The alignment on this is amazing. You know, we did have some issues on alignment at times. You have to find the right tolerance on here and get it perfect. Otherwise, on the S10s, the Note 10s, and the newer devices, your OCA may not line up properly with the punch out on the glass, thus causing you to remove the Oka and have to redo it. So with this universal mold, this actually gives you a perfect alignment. I'd say a good 90 to 95% of the time once you're able to use this properly. Now, if you guys are interested in purchasing these, we do have a couple on hand on sale on our website. If you visit us at www.mrphonedoctor.com, there's a buy section on there, click on refurbishing tools and you'll be able to see these two on there. And we'll gladly ship anywhere in the US. So that was just a little intro on, on these molds and how you can eliminate waste and cost as I said earlier. Let's go ahead and step back in the lab and I'll show you guys how these molds work and the processes that we do to make sure that we get a flawless finish on the OLEDs. All right guys, welcome back to the lab. So I'm gonna first start off by going over the differences in the molds, okay? So these were the old set of molds that we were purchasing, which I mentioned earlier, these actually did get kind of costly. So um, you basically have a uh, mold for your OCA, which is this one here. It lets you know that it says OCA here. You have your LCD mold. If you guys know how to read Chinese, you'll be able to read that. But um, we know this one's a Chinese because it, it's actually got these rubber grommets here that help adhere everything. Glass mold here that is used for the glass. We know this one's glass because it's actually smoother. It, it won't scratch the glass whenever you apply the glass on here. And then we have our our base mold. So this base mold actually holds these two rubber molds. You're gonna have a mold that does not have any IC cutouts like this one here. If you notice the difference, this one has the IC cutouts and the flex cutouts for the AMOLED display. This one does not have it, so this is actually the one that you use for your OCA. So yeah, just want to go over that with you guys, just to show you guys the differentiations and why there is so many different molds for each model because as technology changes, you know, the cutouts get different, the phones get larger in size, so they need to make a mold for each one of these. So this is something that we're pretty much eliminating now in the future. So this black mold here, this is actually used to laminate the OLED to glass. I'll be using this one in the second step. I'm first off going to start off by using our universal OCA mold. So this one's for applying the OCA onto glass. 
and just a tip it can actually be used on iPhone and Samsung okay so if it's flat you can use it I don't recommend using it on the iPhone fr framed ones that have the uh, the wire frames like the older generation iPhones um, anything flat where you have to reattach a frame manually like the iPhone 10s and above it's okay for that because you're not going to be having any wire gouges pressing in on here so let's go ahead and begin I'm gonna first off by um, laminating a OCA onto a S10 Plus and after I get done with that I'll go ahead and show you guys how we laminate the S10 Plus onto the magic mold here. So we're first off going to start off by doing an S10 Plus. So I just want to make sure everything's nice and clean here before I begin. You know you don't want to have any kind of dirt, dust, debris flying in. That's the last thing you want is for specs and stuff to get in there and cause rework okay. Um, you know specs and dust it does happen it's you know it's kind of very hard to minimize that but unless you have like a strict uh, clean room with the ventilation and everything which you know you could be paying thousands for something like that so but we're pretty good here I mean we generally keep everything pretty clean and minimize any kind of dust so I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this base mold first and there is actually two different sides if you notice you have this thicker side and you have this uh, thinner that doesn't have any protruding rubber out so this is going to be the front of the glass so you're basically going to lay your s10 plus glass here and since this one has a thicker edge this is the more spongier one so since it fle flexes in the curve will actually go in and press in on that and allowing it to get a nice seamless grab onto the glass um, leaving it pretty much almost bubble free which i'll show you guys we have our S10 glass here. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and reveal the front of it. Just peel it off. And I like to leave this front one on until we're ready to reveal, because these are already pre-cleaned. We don't have to worry about wiping it. So we're basically gonna just align the S10 Plus glass right here, just like so. Give it a nice firm press down. And you wanna make sure you have it pretty centered on here and everything, okay? And see, look, there's already a little piece of dust getting in there, you see that? But the good thing is that's underneath, that's not going to go anywhere, so we'll just leave that there. So there we go. We're going to apply these uh, black little stickers that they have here. They're very tacky, so we're going to apply one up on top here. And then we're going to apply another one right here, down here on the bottom. Just like that. And these actually get a good grab. So our next step is we're going to want to go ahead and manually align the OCA. So with the OCA, there's two different sides on the OCA, okay? So you're gonna have one rough edge that needs to go face up and then you're gonna have another little layer right here. I'm hoping you can see these different layers. Let me get some black background, but if you notice, you'll see a little layer right here. So with the longer edge, you want that to actually be facing down over on the glass, all right? So I'm gonna do this um, basically just over my station here and then I'll show you guys how it aligns. It's kind of hard to hold it with one hand and apply it, so, but I think you guys could hopefully see in the video how I line it. I'll, I'll get in a good view. So you basically want to start off with the camera punch outs. You have them here. These need to be aligned perfectly right on there. So we get a nice seamless alignment and we don't have any Oka overlapping. So I'm going to go ahead and just with the bird's eye view overhead, just align it and just set it on, make sure that we're over the punch outs. And once you feel that you're all on, aligned on the punch outs, you can go ahead and uh, press down on this black grommet. That'll adhere the Oka to the, uh, to the uh, little rubber grommet, gasket, whatever it is, I think it's a grommet. It's a little rubber sticker, we just call it the little sticker. I don't know the proper terminology on these, but um, yeah, so that looks good right there. And you want to press down, make sure when you press down that everything's aligned. If you notice, you can see how everything here is aligned. You see how those punch outs are perfectly aligned? So that's pretty much that. So that is that is going to be the first first step here. And then we are going to go ahead and get our base mold and set this bad boy in here. And if you notice, there's a little cut slot here. Um, I like to just make sure everything's aligned properly. You know, you can see that it's got a cut out here and this one has a cut out as well. So just make sure that when you're putting these together, they, they line up. On this one, honestly, it doesn't really matter, but if you're using these older YMJ molds, it's very, very critical because you may laminate the old lid upside down. So I just like to stick to, you know, what we learned in the past. So we'll put this here 
and we're going to go ahead and use this spongy mold set it on top just like so and with this we just give it a nice little press i'm going to go ahead and press it normally i press it down on my on my station but since i'm making this video i kind of want to let you guys see how i'm pressing it so you press it and this tackiness of this top one's actually going to grab the oca and lift it up so you don't want to lift up quickly because if you lift up quickly it's going to lift up the glass so you basically just lift up very gently nice and soft so that way the the actual glass stays stuck to the bottom and once you go nice up up and it looks like it didn't grab on the bottom it's on the left side so i'm going to squeeze it back down and it's lifting up we don't want it to lift up too much just go nice and easy easy and there we have a nice successful application of the oka on top so once you have that there we're gonna go ahead and lift this up reveal it and you can see there is some bubbling here so what i like to do is we we'll just press these out you know just push them out just like so and there we go so that, and now by having this little outer oka layer here, it actually allows you to reveal it. If you had it the other way, you wouldn't be able to reveal it. So that's why it's critical to have that there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove these grommets. We don't need them anymore. And let's go ahead and reveal the glass. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the glass. And after I reveal the glass, I'll go ahead and reveal the OCA. So I'm just gonna pull this down. And then we'll reveal the OCA. And we'll just set this right on top here. And of course, just put it in here. Close it and we'll go ahead and hit OCA. Make sure everything all is set up. Normally on the OCA, we keep that at one level. Okay, you're gonna be, we use the hottest 70 degrees Celsius, uh, the vacuum 100 and the uh, press time 150 in case you guys are inquiring about that. So hit start. We'll let that start and this is going to take a good probably about four or five minutes and once it's done We can go ahead and reveal it in my last video. We did do an unboxing on this OLED 2020 machine It was something that um, we did have a little bit of hiccups on to begin with You know one of the little actuators inside when they install it they install them backwards. So um, We had that issue and then we had a vacuum issue our vacuum went out. So we were like, oh man, it just got crazy busy here. So any of you guys out there that were waiting for repairs, I, I really appreciate your guys' patience. And of course we got um, you know, exposed to COVID. So um, we had to shut down temporarily, make sure everyone was clear before we came back to work. So um, the beginning of the year was really, really rough guys. So I really apologize for any delays for anybody that sent out their devices to us. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you once again for your patience. So in the future, Actually, probably next week. It's the future is coming pretty soon. So I'm going to say next week, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, operation on this OLED 2020. So I know that's something that I promised for you guys. It's just that we've been trying to get caught up with everything. And I've been having to, you know, do boom, boom, boom with all help out with the guys and everything. So I will be doing a full operating on this. So make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell so you guys are notified whenever uh, this video does drop. So, all right, the Oka to glass laminating has finished. Let's go ahead and review. And we gotta be very, very careful. Está muy caliente. Oh, yeah, it's toasty. That'll definitely wake you up in the morning. And let's take a look here. And she's a beauty. This is what I like to see all the time. If you notice here, you can see that all the camera punch outs. Let me just, you can see how the camera punch out is perfect. Let's hope I can get you guys a good little view. But yeah, you can see the OCA is actually aligned perfectly right on, right between the two little lenses there. And then you don't have any overlap or anything whatsoever right here on the top area. See that? There we go. So that's a perfect lamination. Now it does have a little bit of bubbling. I hope you guys can see these small little bubbles. They're very, very, very minimal. Okay. So you can see right here and right here on the corners. But yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and autoclave this for, yeah, you know, we usually do 13 minutes. We set this in our little oven and turn it on. 
Make sure everything's set for 13. Once it's set, we can go ahead and begin. And once the autoclave finishes, that pretty much finalizes the oceated glass lamination. It's gonna have a nice solid grab onto the glass, bubble free. And then we can go ahead and continue and use this magic mold to apply the OLED onto it. So we'll get back to you guys here in a bit as soon as the autoclave finishes. Okay, the autoclaving has finished on the OC to glass. I'm gonna go in and reveal. Take a look, make sure that there is no bubbles. But everything looks great. Let me show you guys here. You can see here that everything on the corners is bubble free. So we can go ahead and safely laminate this onto the OLED. And I do have a B grade OLED sitting here. So that's what I'm going to use. I don't have any A grades. But as always, we always want to test the display before we do any kind of lamination. So I'm just going to go ahead and boot this up real quick. And you can see this one does have a line running down it vertically. So it's got a little line here. And it does look like there's a little clip on the polarizer right here. Right there. So we're going to go ahead and just laminate this just for video purposes and show you guys how this laminating mold works. But of course, we always want to test the touch. So I'm going to go into the touch settings here. Come on. And you can see that the touch is fully operable. Go in and put it to sleep. Remove the flex. And we do want to make sure we give this a nice detail clean. So I'm just going to use some ISO on the first pass just to uh, give get all this residue and all this larger gunk off. And then once you have majority of this stuff off, you can go ahead and uh, use the contact cleaner. We use contact cleaner to give it a final polish. And if there's any glue on the flex, you can just rub it off gently with your finger. It's generally what I like to do. Never use your fingernail. Fingernail leads to death. Just want it to feel nice and smooth. Make sure there's no glue. Any type of glue or anything that's left on there is going to cause, cause the OLED not to sit flush. And then later on, eventually, you may have some bubbling appear. So always try to get it as clean as you can. Always, always, okay? Once we know this is all clean, ready, we're going to just stand it up on the flex very, very gently. You don't want to drop it on the flex and put pressure on it. So you'll see how I handle this OLED with the flex. So you just want to grab it from the outers just like so. And then I just like to set it on this door. I'm just going to set it here, stand it up, and just sit it just like so. Like that. Now by setting it like this, this will actually just prevent any kind of dust particles or any debris to fall down on it. You know, if you have it faced up like this, then it's going to be prone to have particles and stuff fly on it. So we do need to use this extra base mold from the OCA, uh, Universal OCA mold. Um, I, this is the thinner one. It doesn't have that thick um, rubber on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this on here upside down. And then we're going to go ahead and use this uh, uh, magic mold. So the magic mold, it is two sided. It's two sided. So you can see you have a cutout here. And then on this side, there's no cutout. So we want to use this cutout and we're going to lay the flex on this side here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a cleaning with some ISO. Just make sure it's clean. And normally I would have my little uh, humidifier running to help with all the particles and stuff, but I kind of feel like it gets in the way whenever I'm making a video. You know, I want you guys to see exactly what I see. So, um, and in this case, I'm just using a B grade screen. So if I get a little bit of dust in there, I mean, it's cool. It's just, it's just for video purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to reveal. Um, I am right handed. So. Um, since I am right-handed, I'm actually going to be handling the OLED with my right hand. So whatever your dominant hand is, I recommend handling the OLED with that hand so you can get a better alignment, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready. 
Um, I'm going to just re reveal this, make sure there is no dust or nothing got on it, so it looks good still. We're good. And I'm going to go ahead and work with the camera punch outs facing up. I'm going to go ahead and use this um, pull tab to reveal. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal this corner here. And I'm just going to pull down. And I do want to make sure that this is clean. You know, sometimes dust particles may fly on this as well. And any kind of dust as you're pulling, the oka is going to, the static's going to end up pulling it. So I just want to make sure this is clean as well. You know, you always want to try to minimize any kind of dust. So once we have this here, I'm going to pull it, start revealing the OCA. OCA is revealed, keep it face down. And then we're going to grab this OLED and I'm going to inspect one last time. Just make sure there is no dust and it looks good. So now that there's no dust, we want to just go ahead and manually align everything. So we're going to start with the camera hole punch outs. So I'm going to basically just view and I got I got to look at it, but you're going to want to just look in there, make sure that these punch outs line up perfectly. And you want to always go in at an angle. OK, you never want to go straight down because you're going to end up getting stuck on the bottom. If you go up on top, you can actually pull it off and, and re realign. So I'm trying to just align the camera punches. So once you see that the punches are lined up, you can go ahead and start beginning laying the OLED down. And I use my fingers as a guide. Like these fingers on my left hand, they're actually slowly guiding the OLED down to make sure that it's right in the middle, right in between. And this one's a little lopsided, but I think we're still good. And then once you know that you're aligned good on the uh, camera punch out, we can go and just press down here in the middle. So just press there in the middle. See that? So we're good. You can see the camera punch outs and everything are pretty good, nicely aligned. And everything looks good here. So now that we have this here, we do need to lay the flex on this cutout that I mentioned to you guys earlier, right here. So I do like to get down low, get down to good level to where I can see where the flex is and make sure that it sits right in between. Not too high, not too low. I say right in the middle where the flex is, has plenty of room to move. Otherwise, you're gonna end up killing the OLED. So that looks good. You can see right in there where how the OLED is actually sitting right in between where we need it to be. So when it comes down, it'll come down and it's got plenty of clearance there. It's not going to hit up on the edge. So we'll go ahead and put this in our laminator. This one does use a different setting. We'll go to OLED. Pressure's got to be 0.4. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and use 70 degrees Celsius. Um, we're doing glass, so we're going to do 80, what is it, um, on the magic mold, it's going to be 0.4, 70 temp, 80 vacuum, and then the whole time is 15 seconds, so we're good. Start that. Uh, we'll go ahead and let this run, and we'll cut back here in about a few minutes as soon as it's all done. Lemonade has finished. Let's go ahead and reveal the OLED. So we'll take a look here see everything here you can see a little bit of bubbles very very minimal which is good it's no problem nothing our autoclave cannot handle and we'll go ahead and boot this up give it a test and here you go you can see that everything on here is still properly working still has that line here running on the edge Do the touch. And everything's good. So our last final two steps is of course going to be to autoclave. Autoclaving is gonna relieve any of these little 
minute bubbles that are there. And you can see it still shows that little clip that was there from uh, the polarizer. So you know this is the same OLED we were working with. So I'm going to go in and set this in the autoclave for about, you know, the same amount of time, 13 minutes. Now the only thing with the OLED and, and these lines, once they have lines like this, they are very, very delicate. So um, I'm just hoping that it does not go out because of that line. Because it is, what it does, it just presses air and pushes everything. These little lines that are running on, on, on the OLED is actually damaged from the flex. What happened was something actually hit it. So with the pressure and everything pressing, I'm just hoping it doesn't cause it to completely go out. But if it does, you know, this is just for, uh, you know, video purposes. And hopefully you guys learn just to be very careful and you kind of get some experience on what happens whenever you press the flex area there. So let's go ahead and cook, cook it 13 minutes and then we'll cut right back after this. All right, guys. Okay. The autoclaving has finished, so let's go ahead and reveal. And you can see here, all the bubbles and everything have disappeared, which is great. This was a perfect lamination. And of course, no waving. You can see that there. You can see all these little minor imperfection of the bubbles disappeared except for this you know this was actually a clip in the polarizer so that one there is definitely gonna stay but let's go ahead and test it let's hope that the pressure on the autoclave didn't hurt this little minor flex area which it didn't it looks good but you can see how everything is fully operable And there she is, she's a beauty. And then of course, the last final step that we like to do is we like to put it in this UV light. So we have this little thousand watt UV light. What this does is it just helps cure the OCA and prevents any kind of future bubbles coming in. We just put it in there for about 180 seconds, technically three minutes. So we'll just set this in here, turn it on, hit the start, and we'll let that finish up. So that's gonna pretty much wrap up my video, guys. I really hope you guys got some useful information. Be on the lookout next week. I'm gonna be working on the OLED 2020. This bad boy right here. We're gonna be doing a full run and setup and show you guys how this machine works. And if you guys are interested in getting any of these molds, the universal molds that we have, um, feel free to visit our website. We do have a few of them for sale. You can go to www.mrphonedoctor.com click on the buy section and they'll be under there under refurbishing tools. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure you guys subscribe. Um, leave us a thumbs up. It does help out with the YouTube algorithm and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.